It's okay. It's Tyler with Gaia Force Gaming, and I'm here with Ben, as some of you may know, is Airborne of Gaia Force Gaming, and uh, we're here to talk about uh, the deck he played for Ultimate Cup and just his run in general yesterday at Core TCG's Ultimate Cup. So if uh, if you want to take it away, Ben. Yeah. So uh, I ended up playing. Um... You know, uh, everyone's favorite uh, flavor that never seems to go away, uh, Blue Hybrid. <laughs> uh, went pretty well with it. Ended up going 7-2. and two. I lost to an Imperial and a Green Hybrid. Uh, and had dogs barking in some of the rounds. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, as much as everybody hates Blue Hybrid... Um, I enjoy it, and it's obviously the deck that I've seen the most success with. I feel like people know of me doing well with it or Gabuban, so uh, I uh, haven't felt confident this format because I've been playing a lot of Melga Joggers because of, I wanted to play that deck for like eight months. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just uh, went back to my roots, got back from Anime Expo, hadn't played that much, so yeah. Um, Babies are straightforward for Kiara, one Upa. No reason to go in depth with that. And then for rookies, I'm only running 12, which seems to be the trend, especially with mulligans. Um, even without mulligans, I think Clyde managed to win the in person regional with only eight uh, blue rookies. Um, so I did three Strabi, uh, and because of the resurgence of green hybrid, three Siako, and three Midoki. And then, of course, uh, I only did three Boko. Everyone's been doing four, uh, from what I've been seeing. But uh, deck space was kind of tight with some uh, choices I wanted to make. So I just left it at three. So Strabi searches Blue Tamers uh, and Hybrids. Um, is really fringe with Digivolving Kori Kaku on top of it for three and being able to freeze something if it doesn't have sources. Uh, Siako actually came in clutch, not necessarily because of its floodgate effect. Um, I did turn off HPD a lot against Imperial players, but the 3k DP is absolutely huge. Like, I would say more so in this format than BT7, just because against Imperial, not only are they running two, uh, 2k DP uh, Vmons, but now they're running four 1k Labras. So it just had such a high chance of actually living in security. Um, and so I just went super aggressive with it. Uh, Madoki, uh, staple, uh, same reasons, Bloodgate, obviously great. And I even got to go a little aggressive and take chances with it in security as well because of the 1k DPs. And same with the Bokos. Um, I mean, if anyone lets this stay on board and they don't have a Floodgate or something, it gets way too much value for uh, just what it is. So that's it for the rookies. And then for champions, I'm running nine. We got the four Kumamon, the four Korikaku, and the Clyde Staple, the one Ikaku. Um, four Kumamon, four Korikaku. I mean, you, it's not blue hybrid if you're not running eight. Uh, the you know the standard eight champions, but the Ikaku. Uh, being able to swing over uh, Stingmon and XB, uh, strip an armor and kill it. Uh, being able to kill Gatomon before it gets developed and you know sets up all the crap. If you don't have the Siako to choke him at one and then shut off the cost reduction, um, it just puts in way too much work. And being able to Digivolve on top of your rookie uh, without forfeiting a hybrid is actually pretty huge. And then 6k additional in security makes makes it just slightly beefier. Um, so if they swing into security, uh, there were a couple times where I think uh, one of my opponents swung it with a Lobo when they were wanting to uh, DNA to try to set up lethal um, and hit into Ikaku. It died, and then they weren't able to DNA, and I pretty much won the game from there. Um, so yeah, that's it for the champions. Also, with mulligans, you're able to uh, feel a lot more comfortable just running lower counts of things. Ultimates or Beowulf. Nothing really to say here. <laughs> He's one of my favorite cards, I'll say that. Uh, this is the tech card that people will probably be the most shocked about. 
I don't run a Zulong. Uh, as I've said in other deck profiles where I show literally the same deck, um, I'm not too big a fan of a Zulong, uh, especially like, you know, it works in Mass Demon, it works against Green Hybrid, it works in those decks, but the those decks all run 13k bodies, um, so you're always at risk of it dying, especially with the uh, security options and everything. And a lot of times when I'm playing those matchups, they already have the Memory Floodgate out, uh, the Gazimon or Terriermon, whatever it may be. Uh, Magna Garuru, I was expecting to see more, uh, a lot more decks since we don't have D-Reaper right now that uh, rely a lot more on ultimate level Digimon. And being able to Digivolve on top of Beowulf to bounce a Pyildra won me so many games this weekend. Um, so yeah, and also it restands like crazy. The effect says when an effect adds a, a card to your hand, you may unsuspend one of your Digimon. So you can do it at any time. It's optional. And it can be off of a card draw from Kiaramon. It can be uh, playing Astrabi to search, play Boko to search, literally anything. As long as you just hit the target um, or you're able to bounce with something, you restand. And it, you don't even have to restand itself. It can restand anything. You restand Susana if you're, you know, if you have that crack of a turn. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, it for the Megas. And then one Susano, of course. Um, the Susano only came in clutch, well, actually, only showed up once in all my games, and it was the very first game of the tournament against a Mastamon player. Uh, I basically just had them sitting at two or three security the whole game, and I was able to set up a, uh, I want to say it was like a Howling with Soren Joe into Susano, clear three security, and then swing with a rookie kind of thing. Um, and, yeah, uh, Basically, uh, for this, I was expect like if I was to see yellow high rate, it would help me without decking out or running out of steam. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it for him. Then for the tamers, I'm actually running I think only 13, um, which is slightly lower than what everyone has been used to. I think it's 14 or 15 is generally the standard for blue hybrid. But we got the three Davis, the four Sora and Joe the four Tommy, and the three Matt. I really would have liked to have the fourth Matt, uh, um, but, uh, oh, I guess I am running 14. Yeah, I can do math. <laughs> um, I'm running 14 Tamers. Uh, but uh, I really wanted the fourth Matt, but um, with Mulligans and everything, it came up pretty often, being able to play it when I went first. Going first felt so good this weekend, just being able to uh, slam down the Matt uh, make their turn awkward. If they play a rookie, I still go to two, so they basically play a rookie for four at minimum. Uh, it sets up all the plays, allows me to be the aggressor against uh, Imperial and Armor Rush while maintaining the board. Um, and, yeah, that was kind of it for that. And then lastly, the options. These are also going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, three Hammer Spark, one Ice Wall, three Howling, one Innocence Blizzard, and then another Clyde for uh, Tech, uh, one Rattlestar. Uh, three Hammer Spark, uh, mostly because of Dex, uh, Dex Lots, um, because I was running the Magna and the Susano, I didn't really have many opportunities to uh, uh, invest highly into the options. I was investing a little more into the Digimon options. Um, so I only went with three Hammer Spark. Um, they came up pretty often. I think there might have been one game where I was like wishing I had a Hammer Spark. Um, so, but you know, you reap what you sow. Um, so I had to hold that, but it, it worked out pretty well. Uh, one Ice Wall. I mean, we need it back at four, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, kidding. Um, three Howling. I have always been part of the Three Howling Club. Even in Nationals, I ran Three Howling uh, in Gabu Bond. Um, and it just gets better. It, it, we're almost at the point where four is worthwhile. I think BT9 will start playing four. Um, Innocence Blizzard, this card's insane. I've never played it before. Um, and it felt cracked the entire time. And then Rattlestar, like I said, same thing as Magna Garuru, being able to bounce Pyildra is insane. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the deck. Very cool. It's nice to see the deck updated for EX2. Uh, what, if you don't mind just briefly talking about your matchups, uh, 
and maybe any changes you might make to the deck or how you would approach like playing popular matchups stuff like that just what people might well, a little rundown of what people might want to hear if they plan on taking this to an event soon uh, so yeah, my matchups, I'll start with those. Uh, first one was a Mastodon. I, I won 2-0, surprisingly, after I didn't feel too confident in that matchup. Um, but it worked out pretty nicely. Second round was an Imperial player that unfortunately had only been playing for three months and had never faced Blue Hybrid before. Um, so, uh, I, uh, taught them, uh, what to hate about the deck. Um, Third round was a Beelzemon. Uh, that matchup, unfortunately, felt unlosable for me. Uh, I felt like I bullied that player pretty bad, but uh, they were invested in um, trying to learn the matchup, so we played another set afterwards, and it felt just as horrendous. Um, fourth round was the first loss was against the green hybrid player. Uh, they played pretty well. Um, I think the first game, I... For some reason, w did not promote my Siako because he had the Terrier Mon set up uh, and the Tamer on board, so they could easily rapid it. But I think it was probably smarter for me to aggress and try to just keep the green hybrid player on their heels because I feel like uh, they do better in that matchup when they are more set up, um, especially with being able to remove everything with the rapids um, and then you know being able to just destroy you after they get the uh, Ancient Beetle or Ancient Troy or whatever set up. Um, so, and then the second game I tried to aggress a little more and ended up getting shut down by a Cherry Mon that was standing in the way of my uh, Beowulf. Um, and did not have enough memory to either get a second Tamer on the board. Actually, I think I was out of Tamers. Um, and, uh, and shut any of that down. I ended up having to rattle star a Shiva Mon, uh, just so it stripped one less security. Um, and it was kind of downhill from there. Uh, game after that, I think, was where I started running into my onslaught of Imperials. Uh, played an Imperial, beat an Imperial. I think after that, I played another Imperial and the loss. Um, See, it was that four rounds, five, six. Might have just been uh, nothing but Imperials at that point. Uh, <laughs> just and, uh, yeah, the second to last round, there was an Armor Rush uh, DNA hype, or DNA deck. Um, so, you know, that's kind of like Imperial Junior. Uh, so, in a way, it, I think it was just nothing but Imperials after that point. Um, oh, sorry, I completely skipped one. Uh, after the Green Hybrid player, I ran into a Terrier Mon Tribal that was 3 and 1. That's pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, uh, it, was, it was very interesting. Um, unfortunately, they. Uh, uh, I had a lot of people this weekend that forgot that HPD got shut off by Siako Mon, and I think I won at least two or three games because of it. Um, the, one, uh, the Terrier Mon one I felt the worst about, though, because for some reason went on Discord. Uh, the way mine is, is sometimes my audio will stop for both my microphone and my speakers intermittently just without telling me or anything. Um, and I have to go into settings, and even though they're already selected on the proper devices, I have to select them again before audio actually registers. And I was trying to stop him before he uh, went into the Mega Gargo, but uh, I finally fixed it when he was like passing turn. I was like, hey, actually, it passed turn when you did evolve into the Rapid, so he ended up scooping. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, the Siako shutting down HPD was actually a really big factor. Um, the, I think the last match that I want to go in depth on was my other loss against Imperial. I had one singular minor mistake that might have cost me potentially a thousand dollars if you think about it, because I, it, it could have potentially, uh, cost me top eight and it was, um, Against the Imperial player, they had bricked really hard and um, uh, game three, and I was just constantly shutting everything down, setting up lethal and everything. I was at four security. He only had a Davis and Ken on board and an XV and Raising. And the first thing I had done that turn was Digivolve and Madoki and Raising. Um, and I either had 
gotten the Strabi that was in hand at some point during that turn, or I already had it at the beginning of the turn. Excuse me, and um, I took for granted digivolving and racing. Um, I always do it the first thing every turn because I want to evaluate all the options I have that turn. Uh, you know, draw where you can, essentially. Um, and that actually ended up being a commitment. I didn't realize it at the time. I needed that Madoki to place on the board to choke him uh, at one, uh, because even though I choked him at one the following turn with the Strabi, um, he had the Hammer Spark in hand to get the XV, uh, or swing, be able to play the Stingmon after swinging with XV, uh, go into Pyildra, swing, restand. Uh, he got the HPD from a security check on the previous turn, and then went into Dragon Mode, spit out another bo uh, the other two bodies, went into another Pyildra. There was nothing in security to stop it, and I died. Um, and so, I guess that's like the main takeaway for me is, um, uh, that, I mean, it happened to me at Miami as well, where I made the same mistake against Diego um, in the final round of day one. I did evolved in uh, into Madoki in racing instead of playing it. He went off that turn with a bunch of jack raids and killed me because Lil Fluke did Lil Fluke things, mm -hmm. and just. Uh, being able to evaluate the power of your rookies um, and where you play them, if you're setting up for lethal or you're trying to set up for a turn to shut them off and to set up your own lethal, you need to evaluate uh, what rookies you need to have on the board or what turns you need to have them on, uh, out, whether or not they're protected. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, and that's, I mean, I think I talked a little bit in the, uh, in my last deck profile about just trying to avoid tunnel vision, and it could come in a lot of different forms, so it's a good little reminder right. for people. Sometimes you don't realize it's tunnel vision until you're like, oh, wait. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I do think Blue Hybrid is still a really interesting, uh, very valid deck. I think it's probably possible we're going to see it into BT9 as well. Um, 100%. So, other than that, any any last takeaways, any final shout-outs, anything you want to say before we wrap up? Um, I'll say for, like, final things with the deck itself, um, I've been really high on wanting to try Chimera in this deck. Like, I uh, I know you've talk, or heard me go on endless, like, uh brainstorms about how I want to like make Chimera work. I have a, another blue hybrid deck that's Ancient Guru Magna Hybrid that uh, I play for fun that utilizes Chimera so that I can uh, you know, swing with a Kendo that has a promo Lobo underneath it uh, for jamming and then DNA and then grab another Lobo from Trash, put it under, and then makes Ancient Guru only cost one on top of Chimera and is able to swing that same turn. So, so like all sorts of fun combos, but being able to recycle hybrids and utilize multiple bounce effects with Magna Gururu uh, for additional turns seems awesome, and you know, being able to kill 2Ks and whatnot. But mm -hmm. that's uh, all I have to say for the deck. Um, shoutouts, uh, obviously shoutouts to everyone in GFG. Um, I feel like we had a pretty good performance. 50% um, of us got top 32, so that was pretty awesome. Um, and that seems to be our trend, where we have uh, two people perform well, uh, and then two people that... Uh, kind of end up in the middle of the road, but um, I mean, if, if we're averaging like 67% percentile, that seems pretty outstanding. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know they were bummed, but I think Trey and Shannon came, what, both like, top one, 120? Top 150? In that range? Or Trey was yeah, like, a little, uh, like 117th or 118th, and then Shannon was like 151st or 148th? Those, yeah, those are like still that. solid yeah, records. Still. Yeah, those are still solid records. Like, and and uh, again, like I, I've said it before, like you don't perform. It, it's hard to perform every time, you know. Right. I mean, Ying is world champion level player, and even he has his off days. Yeah, I mean, it happens to uh, him. Well, Ying lost to the same player that Shana lost to in the last round, which happened to be uh, one of my local buddies. Shout out to Thomas. Yeah, did he take the whole thing, Thomas, right? No, no, different Thomas. Different Thomas, Thomas did? Okay, okay. Uh, 
No, our local Thomas was playing Mastamon, um, and he uh, ended up not doing too hot, but I think he finished 5-2-1. Um, okay. But he ended up beating Ying in the mirror uh, in the second round, which was huge. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Sorry, I uh, was very busy yesterday, so I was trying to keep up with everything, but I was multitasking a lot as I wasn't able to play. But, um, yeah, uh, and we also, uh, um, this video will certainly go up first, but we're going to have Dan on here to talk about his updates for Imperial for EX2, which, spoilers, isn't that much, <laughs> uh, but grats up to him for coming top eight, um, and yeah, and we got another ulti cup next week, I'm not sure which of us are, I'm playing in it, I don't know if. I think Dan said he wasn't able to. Are you playing in it next week, too? I should be playing it. Uh, I don't know if I have high expectations for myself. I don't know if I'll play Blue Hybrid again. Um, so I, I think I'm going to just try to invest the next week in the rest of the team, just helping everybody prep for matchups. Um, and then, I mean, if I am kind of in the floating in the ether, so to speak, uh, with what to do, I might just jam blue hybrid again and probably not do as well. Yeah. Well, either way, uh, thanks for taking the time to talk about everything. Uh, if you're still here watching, thank you for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed the deck profile. I'll probably put a <coughs> clickbait uh, title for this one because I don't know if just putting blue hybrid will get it. Maybe I'll put like Magna Groom on hybrid and people will be like, what the hell? There's only one Magna Groom on. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Ben, and congratulations again. And uh, we'll see you next time.